we just got this GE washer in a few days ago and we've actually ran a few tests on it and it's given us a lot of problems. It does not want to stop draining. Uh, come to find out even after replacing the pump, it still wants to drain. We've had all kinds of fits with it. Come to find out this is a common problem with GE washers. And if yours constantly runs and you can't fix it or this machine goes into spin mode but doesn't spin very well, it will spin but it doesn't get the clothes fully spun, they're both the same problem, which is very odd. Um, it's a known manufacturer's defect, and all you need to fix it is a screwdriver with a quarter inch hex head and a 1 1 16th drill bit. Don't need a drill, just the drill bit. So let's go ahead and take this apart, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's go ahead and begin. First, make sure the machine is unplugged from electric. There are two screws that hold the console in place on this GE washing machine, one on each side behind the washing machine console, and you need to remove these with a quarter inch hex head screwdriver. These screws are extremely long, so make sure to place them somewhere safe. Once you have both screws out, you can now roll the washer console up and forward. Note that there are a ton of wires, and there's a pressure hose that doesn't allow you to totally remove the console, so you may want to remove the pressure hose to give you a little bit more room. With the console up, there are two quarter inch hex head screws that need removed, one on each side. On the right side, you may need to move the motor capacitor to access the screw by the way. With the screws out, you can lift up on the back side of the washer lid, then you want to push forward to dislodge the washer top from two hidden clips on the front of the GE washer. This can be a pretty tight fit, and it may take a little bit of force to push it forward. On this system, we can do the particular fix we're looking at without removing the entire washer top, so we're going to angle the lid just enough to reveal the back left corner where the pressure hose goes into the tub. The pressure hose is gray and travels down into the tub, and then it goes into a plastic pressure port. And it's not the easiest to see on camera, but here's the best I can do on the pictures. It's located approximately two thirds of the way down on the wash tub, and it goes into the tub at a 90 degree angle. To access it, you wanna wear a long sleeve shirt and or gloves when you reach down to grab and remove the hose from the pressure port. The hose has a pretty tight fit, and it isn't the easiest to access using this top down method. So I'm gonna show you another method in just a minute. A few other things you can check when the pressure hose is off is to blow into the control board side of the pressure hose that we disconnected earlier and then hold your thumb on the tub side of the hose to make sure there are not any splits or damage to where air can pass through the hose and cause an issue. Now if air does leak from the pressure hose when you try this, make sure to replace the hose or that part of the hose. If the hose is loose on the tub and will not fit on very well or it wasn't fully attached, you could cut off some of the pressure hose and then reattach what's left on the port. There is a little bit of room where you can trim it as needed. But the main fix here is to take a 1 16th drill bit and gently push it into the pressure port to clear any debris that could have been left over for manufacturing. You won't be able to see what you're doing, but the main fix here is to take a 1 16th drill bit and gently push it into the pressure port to clear any debris from the inside. You're not going to be able to see what you're doing, but you need to push the drill bit in about one inch, and then once inside, slowly twist the drill bit to ream the port out. Don't push it in too hard because you don't want to push and pierce the tub of the unit with the drill bit. But my tests, I wanted to try it out to see how hard that would be, and it's very hard to actually pierce the tub, so be careful, but not too careful. Now, if reaching in with your hand to do this is too hard, the second option that you can do to get to the pressure port is work from the bottom. First off, you want to drain the tub of water underneath so you don't get residual water. If you take a bucket and put the drain hose in it, gravity will force most of the water out as long as the bucket is lower than the water level of the washer. Once you have it all drained, you're going to want to unscrew the metal plate that holds the washer drain hose in place. You'll use a screwdriver to loosen the screw on the drain hose clamp or use slip jawed pliers to remove the hose clip because I do think this was a replacement hose on this particular GE washer when we were testing. Once you have the washer drain hose removed, you're going to get some residual water, so make sure you have a towel to clean that up. Next, you'll want to use your screwdriver to remove another quarter inch hex head screw from the plastic housing adapter itself. From here, use the flat blade of your screwdriver to press in on the plastic retention tab on the drain hose adapter to remove it from the metal plate. From here, you can get access to the bottom of the tub to use your drill bit to clear the pressure port out. This may or may not be quicker or easier depending on your specific situation and I wanted to show you how to do this. 
Once you've removed the pressure port out, now you want to install the plastic drain hose adapter back onto the metal plate. It's only going to go on one way because of where the holes snap in for the metal screw. When you press it on right, it will snap into place. Put the metal cover on back and then reattach it with a hex head screw. Then put the drain hose back on to the drain hose adapter and screw it down. Next, you'll reseat the GE washer lid onto the top of the washer. You can see that there are metal clips here on the front of the washer and you need to make sure that the lid fits up and over these to put the top back into place correctly. Once you have the washer lid reseated properly, you're going to insert the two hex head screws to the left and right side of the console to reattach the lid. Make sure all the wires and power cord are properly seated because on this washer I had to make sure the power cord harness was placed correctly onto the lid. Once you reinstall the two quarter inch hex head screws, Make sure the pressure hose is reinserted to the board and any other wires are set in place. From here, you can reseat the washer control top lid onto the washer. The console rocks down diagonally and gently and then forward to lock into place. Once you have the console locked into place, you'll insert the last two screws onto the console and now you're done reassembling the GE washing machine. From here, one option that you can do is a washer reset that could help assist the unit and you want to do that by plugging the GE washing machine back in then lifting and closing the lid eight times in a row in the first 30 seconds of the machine being plugged in. I've heard this works in some cases, but not always. Now, if this did not fix your problem and the drain is still running constantly, it's possible that the board on your GE washing machine has gone bad. And I'll tell you the truth, in the case of this machine, that's what happened. The control board was totally shot and you can see some burn marks here that we actually recorded earlier in the video. Now, another consideration once you have this back is if you have persistent problems with the drain pump, it could be that the drain pump has burnt out inadvertently through this issue of it running too much. And you'll have to consider replacing the drain pump. And in the description, I have links to the DP1 and DP2 drain pump, which are great universal replacement pumps for this type of washer. I hope overall that these ideas helped you fix your GE washer. If they did not, Make sure to like and subscribe for other videos, including the diagnostic codes for this washer, because those may help you find out another issue with your washer to solve it. Have a great day.